Jim. Good morning, it's Jim and Becky behind the camera, and we are in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon. So, uh, before we get started this morning, if any of you happen to be in a position to do so, if you wouldn't mind, could you hit uh, like and possibly even subscribe? It would be helpful to us. Uh, anyhow, on with the show. Uh, we're back in the greenhouse for the second one we filmed in the greenhouse, and uh, we have some other stuff to talk about today. So, the thing about us in a greenhouse is, is uh, we don't have what you'd call a production greenhouse because there's only two of us and we... You know, we're looking to grow some tomatoes and some cucumbers and things like that, but uh, but it would be ridiculous to have a greenhouse like this if all you were after was vegetables. So what we do is we use it for other things, and we there are other purposes to it. And in order to make that happen and have fun with it, you've got to kind of create a, uh, a mood, let's say, that, that you like, the kind of stuff that brings you in here and makes you happy to be here. So, my uh, theme for all of this, is, and what I like, is the place where science and art and nature come together. And no, nowhere better than in a greenhouse does this happen. So, uh, what we're going to talk about today is my idea of what the art end of all that means. So, let's, uh, let's get started. I have... To start with, a collection of these uh, occupation era Japanese aquarium ornaments. Uh, they this says "Made in Occupied Japan" on the bottom. You will never see that anywhere on any other thing, probably. They're uh, something I like, and many other people don't. And they're they're kind of funny because they're incredibly rare, but they're not super spendy. So it's uh, it's an interesting hobby to be in, but. I find them to be art, and particularly the older they get, the better they look, some of them. So uh, that's one thing I show, and you'll see a few of them around in the, uh, in the bushes and the beds as we go on with the show. So another thing that I think is just great in a greenhouse is Mexican ceramic. Uh, these, if you look at them, they're the same, obviously, piece, but they're painted completely differently. The people who paint them have artistic stuff, they, they make the lips different, they'll make the eyes different, and all different things uh, on them are a little bit different, so each one is a, a work in itself, and they uh, they hold up really good in a greenhouse. You can clean them up once a year, and they look great, so I would highly recommend you, you find some of those. So uh, you'll also see some of these as we go along in the show. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is my uh, wildlife photography. Uh, these photographs were all taken by my oldest son, and they are of uh, birds that can be found right around here. Uh, one thing about this area of Beaverton, or actually all of the Willamette Valley, is it's covered with wetlands that have uh, all manner of birds. You wake up in the morning sometimes around here and you feel like you're in a uh, bird sanctuary. Another thing that's sort of interesting to note is literally 10 feet behind this back wall, there's a creek that runs all along the back of here behind my back fence. So there's a wildlife area all the way along the back of here. We have birds just everywhere, which is a wonderful thing. So anyhow, uh, that's about all I have to say about the birds. These. Uh, Duck, they're not exactly decoys, they're duck figurines. I just bought these at a garage sale. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, something you should do if you want to bring up your uh, greenhouse is do a little bit of garage sale shopping. You can get some really expensive stuff. These are not cheap, from very, very cheap uh, if you do some garage selling. Let's uh, go on around here. We have a few more of the figurines. These are uh, my mermaids and little creatures, which I like again and some other people don't. Uh, this is a, a, a sea nymph riding on a uh, flying fish. I know that because you can look all this stuff up in books, but it's it's been through the wars, but the thing's still got a smile on its face. I just uh, really like this uh, ornament. Anyhow, let's uh, 
you can also buy these are bird houses here real easy to get and they look really good uh, and they're inexpensive in in a uh, greenhouse up above you'll see these are all handmade to fish along the wall uh, various countries by various people also look real good on the wall let's uh we'll flip around here to the grow beds I should say that the expanded clay grow bed at this height make it really easy to decorate because everything's right here just like you're on a tabletop. We have the uh, our uh, almost original peacock that comes out every year. Uh, this is the father toad here or the mother. I'm not sure which is which, but they don't like each other very much. A little more uh, Mexican ceramic turtle in here. Uh, again, uh, Mexican ceramics. This is mint, and if you crush it, it smells really good. So anyhow, let's go on uh, with the show a little bit. Uh, just to show you briefly, this is celery we're growing here, which looks like we're going to get some celery out of it. Uh, up in here, there's you can see tomatoes are starting to go. I don't know how this is going to show in the sunshine. It's just starting to have the sun come in here. The weather, by the way, here is absolutely perfect right now. So if you... Uh, if you come along here, we have an actual cucumber starting to go. I've had trouble with cucumbers. That's maybe the first one I've managed. Uh, in the back, we have uh, oh, my bird. And down here, we have a, a ceramic Chinese village. And on the other side, we have a ceramic Bohemian village. And you can just put whatever you want in your greenhouse, and it is your business, uh, whatever that might be. We change it up quite a bit. We've gone through different phases. Uh, this is romaine, red romaine lettuce, and I, uh, that's going to be a red pepper, I believe. And uh, eggplant in the back is not doing well. We've had a bout with uh, bugs. So anyhow, uh, kind of in conclusion here, I wanted to talk just a little bit. This is a can of Denny Moore, chill, or <laughs> Denny Moore stew. I bought this yesterday at uh, where did I? Winco for a buck ninety-eight, which is a crazy good price. I recommend you get some if you like this sort of thing. Where I'm going with this is uh, we are uh, what you would call micro philanthropists, and we. Uh, Right around here, we live in a regular neighborhood. There are no like tent cities or anything around here at all. But there are little pantries in our neighborhoods where people bring food to eat and other people that need it come and get it. And you know, in this day and age, there are people that work and just can't quite make it through. So what we do is we buy this and kind of stuff in bulk and all different kinds of cans of food. And then every couple of weeks, we'll take it dump and dump it off, which is where we're going right after this is shot. So you might have your own version of the micro philanthropy. And if you do, if you're doing something like that, uh, send us a line, call in or however we get in, <laughs> communicate with us and tell us what you're doing and how you do it. And we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll see you next time.